Good morning and welcome to the Daily Post on this 14th day of November. It's just some scriptures and some ideas and thoughts that we hope will help you through the day. The scripture to start us today is from Luke 21 verse 19. In your patience possess ye your souls. If you're reading the Bible in a year now, we're moving on to Lamentations and chapters 1 and 2 and Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 to 18. The facts of the day. Ours is a world where people don't know what they want and they're willing to go through hell to get it. A life spent making mistakes is not only more honourable but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. No matter how much you disagree with your kin, if you're a thoroughbred, you will not discuss their shortcomings with the neighbours. The motivation for the day. People say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. On this day in 1789, Benjamin Franklin wrote, Nothing is certain but death and taxes. Still true. In 1909 on this day, an explosion and fire at a coal mine in Illinois in the USA killed at least 250 miners. In 1914, the Brasier was patented in the United States by heiress Mary Phelps Jacob on this day. Previously, women had worn a version of a child's liberty bodice to protect them when playing sport. In 1916, in World War I, the Battle of the Somme came to an end. In that battle, 400,000 British troops were killed or injured. In 1930, on this day, the planet Pluto was discovered. And in 1936, on this day, Edward VIII tells the British Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin that he intends to marry American divorcee Mrs. Wallace Simpson. In 1952, fingernail, false fingernails were first sold on this day. And in 2019, Venice was hit by the worst floods for 50 years on this day. It was due to a combination of a very high tide with waves in St. Mark's Square killing one resident. The personal story of the day is entitled Thinking It Through. Have you ever been puzzled over statements in the Bible that seem to contradict each other? For example, 1 Chronicles 21 verse 1 states that the one who, quote, moved David to is number Israel was Satan. But in 2 Samuel 24 verse 1, we read that it was the Lord. How do we explain this? We know that God doesn't tempt anyone to sin, as we read in James chapter 1 and verse 13. The answer lies in the way the Old Testament writers express the ways of God. They sometimes ascribe to God what he merely allowed, knowing that he permits us to make wrong choices and then uses the tragic results to accomplish his good purposes. In 2 Samuel 24 verse 1 we read that God quote moved David to take a census of Israel. This is clearly a case where God allowed Satan to influence David for it was an attempt to assess Israel's military strength. This reflected the same sin of pride and self-reliance that was prevalent in the nation. As a result God judged the people and their king. So what was the good purpose that God accomplished by allowing Satan to influence David? Although many Israelites had died, the nation itself was spared and purified. The Lord punished the guilty, but also showed his mercy, keeping in mind there were wise men like Joab, who knew that numbering the people was wrong, as we read in 2 Samuel 24 verse 3. God's ways may be beyond our understanding, but we can always trust him to do what is right. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first is entitled, God Gets Things Done. 
The scripture is from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 10, with further references from Hebrews 11 verses 8 to 22. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Trust is something earned over time. We trust our friends and even rely on them because over time they have been there for us. When our friends make promises, we know from our experience with them that they'll follow through with their word. Our faith in God works in much the same way. As his children, we have seen him working in our lives in the past. Our experience of his past faithfulness should lead us to trust him, just as Abraham did, to make good on his promises in the future. Abraham actually provides us with a rich example of a faithful life. Like us, he was promised an inheritance that he had not yet seen. As an example for us, he believed that God's promise was trustworthy and he acted accordingly. He left his homeland and went out to settle in the place that God would show him, as we read in verse 8. Faith, then, involves obeying God, even though we can't see the end result. We can see another quality of faith in Abraham's life. He never stopped looking forward to God's promises. Within his own lifetime, he did see some of those promises fulfilled. He did go into the inheritance that God had promised him, the promised land. And he never turned back to his home country. However, he did not find a permanent residency there. He did indeed father the promised heir, but he did not see his offspring multiply until they were as numerous as the stars in the heavens. Abraham never saw the promises of God completely fulfilled. God faithfully gave him total, token fulfillments, but Abraham died still looking ahead to the fullness of God's promises, as we read in verses 13 to 15 of today's scripture. But for believers, death is not the end of the story. God will not disappoint Abraham or anyone else who trusts in him. He has prepared an eternal inheritance for him and for all those who live by faith, as we read in verse 16. We find ourselves in a similar situation today. We have seen some of God's promises fulfilled. We have the birth of Christ, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the Christian church, and the early and now the latter reign. Yet we too look forward for the fullness of that eternal inheritance. The second thought for today, the breastplate of righteousness. And the scripture is from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14. Stand therefore, having on the breastplate of righteousness. The Roman soldier's breastplate was placed under the belt and proceeded from the waist over the torso and chest and around the shoulders. It was often decorated and indicated rank and regimen, but in every instance the breastplate served the same important purpose. That was to protect against attack by sword, spear and arrow. The soldiers were always prepared for attacks and ambushes. They were divided into legions, cohorts and centurias. A legion contained 6,000 men, while a centuria had 80. These 80 men were arranged in a square and had awesome strength in battle. They always stuck together and never fought alone or spontaneously. They merely obeyed commands. Their armour was examined continuously. The breastplates were formed to fit the body and were not nearly as awkward as those appearing later in the Middle Ages. Because the breastplates were not impenetrable, the soldiers needed to be ever alert despite their protection. The breastplate protected the vital organs such as the heart, the lungs and the bowels. The breastplate of righteousness likewise protects the vital organs, the inner life, the heart. Through faith of the heart, we become righteous. Without this breastplate, without knowing we are righteous in Christ, we can easily become slaves to the law and to the accusations of the accuser. Condemnation often secures a firm grip on Christians who, 
in heeding their sensitive conscious are honest and loving to the point of being gullible. Many people accept the accusations that the accuser charges against them and withdraw into self-reproach and self-contempt. The breastplate of righteousness protects us against all this if we let it. An important if right there. Uh, for some humour for today, a couple more of those awkward moments. An awkward moment when you say goodbye to someone and then you both walk off in the same direction. <laughs> the awkward moment when someone tells you to stop clicking your biro and then you have to click it one more time to use it. The awkward moment when you look up from your phone and the person you have been following around the supermarket is not your mother. That awkward moment when you do a math problem and your answer isn't even one of the choices. <laughs> the facts of the day. More than 20% of men and 10% of women say they've forgotten their wedding anniversaries at least once. A chicken will lay bigger and stronger eggs if you change the lighting in such a way as to make them think a day is 28 hours long. The closing thought for today. Lord, today I will go through my friends in my mind and pray for them. That's a great thought. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that the uh, thoughts and ideas of the Daily Post have uh, helped you through the day. We hope you have a blessed day and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.